Hi guys, this is Dr. Jim Anderson, and I'm here from Anderson Podiatry Center for Neuropathy and Chronic Pain, and I'm here to talk to you about sciatic nerve pain, restless legs, and how you sleep at night, and how that can alter things. It can affect you what position you're sleeping. And I, I had a subscriber, somebody listening to one of my YouTube videos, ask this question. So I'm trying to answer the gentleman's question, which was a really awesome question because it puts a lot of different pieces together and it kind of challenged me to teach this because it's not easy to teach sometimes. So, uh, so I think probably the best way to start, I'm going to go over generally some terms, definitions, and anatomy and then show you how all this interplays. So maybe I'll start by just saying this is a little bit of a roadmap of the lower extremity don't worry about this, it's mainly these two pictures I want to focus on, these two uh, anatomical drawings. But realize that just in a big picture world, I'm looking at the lower extremity and I'm saying from my experience and from one research paper with another one on its way, that we really believe that for many patients, there is compression of nerve tunnels going on in the legs, three of them primarily, Sometimes it's just two, but we're saying the problem is here. It's where your, most of your symptoms are from the knee down. However, this gentleman's question was really, you know, like I said, excellent question. Apparently this person has sciatic pain. What's sciatic pain? Well, a lot of you may know, but it's just simply pain that's maybe radiating from your lower back, going down the buttock, and then down into your thigh. Usually that doesn't necessarily go all, down, all the way down to your foot, but from the back, to the hip joint area down the back, the hamstring area, and then down to about the knee and usually stops about there. That's truly sciatic nerve pain because that's where the sciatic nerve lies. So here's, and we have another video talking about surgery on the back and how that has a little bit of a positive effect on restless legs, which supports a little bit what I'm saying. So if you have, and I'm gonna have to talk about something called double crush theory. It's something that's talked about in the, raw, in the neurosurgical world quite often. So all double crush theory says is simply that if you have compression in your back, maybe you have a bulging disc, and that is causing you to have sciatic pain going down your leg, okay? Then I come along, patients come into our, our, our offices, our clinics, and I go, you know what? You've got compression here. You've got compression, a lot of times it's here. It's in a nerve tunnel called the common perineal nerve, also called common fibular nerve, it's on the outside of your leg just below the knee. Oftentimes when people have compression or tightness there, and we can tell that from our clinical examination in an ultrasound evaluation, we can, we can actually work this up and know that there's compression going on there. If we know there's compression going on there, the patient may also say, you know what, I've thought about back surgery, but, and I know I have compression on my disc, because the doctor said so, they did MRI. Well, so we know then that maybe they have compression in their back. That's been verified by maybe an orthopedic surgeon, neurosurgeon. And I'm saying, well, you know what? You've got compression down here too. Compression here, compression in the back. So what double crush theory says is if we were to surgically go in, open up the tunnel, get rid of the pressure on the common perineal nerve, that is then going to help the back and the, the sciatic area, that's double crush. It simply means, and I'm the only, not the only doctor I've seen this, when you do surgery on the comperineal nerve, can it affect positively the sciatic nerve pain? Yes, it can. And why can that, and how can that possibly be? It's simply because this is all interconnected. So the theory is that if you have compression in the back and you have it down here, you open up the area there, you get rid of the compression, there's still compression in the back, no doubt about it, still there, take an MRI, it's not gonna look any different but the nerve is less sensitive to the compression, so your symptoms can improve. And so for the gentleman that wrote this question in on YouTube, it's just, it's a posing a very interesting question because when you have common perineal nerve entrapment, believe me, when you have pain here, I mean, it's uncomfortable. You, it can be very sensitive around the common perineal nerve area and maybe down the front of the leg or even on the calf area, a lot of you might have that, but that's the nerve speaking to you. And when you lay down, it, there's another theory I have about why laying down makes this restless legs get worse, but also just the pressure of the sheets on your bed or your body weight laying on these areas, it actually incites 
more compression from the outside. There already is some with the tunnel, but maybe more pressure just from laying down. And then that makes the sciatic pain even worse. So positionally, a lot of times I'll ask people, do you have to move around, change position quite a bit? And that's oftentimes a problem that they have with this. But I think if they're all interconnected, like the back and this, more likely that can create an issue. It's, it's kind of complicated because you do reposition at night, I'm sure if you have back pain, but you can also have a problem getting comfortable at night when you have compression there. So I hope that explains it a little bit because uh, we truly find that you, my point simply is do not disconnect this from pain above the knee because there is, not in every case, believe me, there isn't, but there can be many times a relationship between symptoms here and symptoms above the knee and correcting it by attacking it here. Uh, and a lot of you have been, I think, misled a little bit in thinking that when you have back pain, it's gonna extend all the way down to the foot. It may, but in most cases, it's gonna stop somewhere around the knee. And if there's symptoms from the knee down, pretty good possibility it could be here. So uh, in a roundabout way, I hope that explains a little bit better why you can have sciatic pain, restless legs, and positionally, it's, it's really a nightmare for those of you trying to sleep at night. So please subscribe to our YouTube channel. I uh, really love having you watch and asking questions. Uh, great questions like this gentleman has, great one, and hopefully I answered it. And if I didn't, make a comment. And if I confused you, and we'll try it again. But I think that should make some sense. Thank you for watching.